Hello everybody, this is Dr. Kevin Connors and we are gonna be talking about the question of doing chemotherapy or not. When you get a diagnosis of cancer, it can be scary and it's easy to get pressured into something that maybe you're not ready to do. So if you're certainly ready to do and have peace about chemotherapy, by all means, that you just need to do what you think is best for your body. But that's not what this little talk is for. This is for the people that um, were offered chemotherapy, maybe sometimes even feel pretty pressured into chemotherapy, and they're trying to decide what to do. So let's walk through some steps. I have some rules here. So rule number one is to slow down a little bit. I know many times it is imperative that you make a decision quickly on the treatment plan that you're gonna do with your cancer. If you have a very aggressive cancer like pancreatic cancer, you don't have a lot of time to decide on whether you know, you're gonna do chemotherapy or not, but still you always have more time than they recommend. So the rule number one is just please, if you're thinking about doing chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, usually you have a lot more time than they say you do. Slow down a little bit and, um, and think about it. I give the example of one of my patients who was told that if she doesn't do radiation immediately, that she has just a couple days to live while she was in the hospital um, with a, a vertebral compression fracture because of cancer had spread to her bones, and she was adamant against doing the radiation, and the radiologist, uh, oncologist came in and said, if you don't do radiation, really, you have a couple days to live. She called me on the phone, and I, you know, kind of talked her into maybe it would be in her best interest to do the radiation, because that's what I believed for this case. <clears throat> she had a lot of pain in her back because of the compression fracture, and we've just seen you know, good results radiating the spine in a specific spot. So she agreed to the radiation after they told her if she didn't do the radiation, she had just a couple of days to live. And then the radiation oncologist said, great, I'll get my nurse in here. The nurse came in and said, okay, we can get you started in three weeks. She was absolutely livid. You told me I had three days to live if I don't do the radiation. I agree to it, and you can't get me in to get scheduled to do it for three weeks. How does that work? Who's telling the truth here? Well, she did end up passing away, but she lived six and a half years. Um, so this is a, a long time ago after that, you know, metastasis to the spine, and she had metastasis several places. Um, and uh, she did that radiation session, the several sessions of the radiation and then just continued on a natural approach and she did really quite well. So rule number one, just slow down a little bit. Um, and then rule number two, <clears throat> don't follow another's dogma. I've said over and over again in many videos in my book, you don't want to be dogmatic about your health care. Meaning that you don't have, you don't want to be just stuck. I'm only going to do an alternative approach, um, and you're not going to have, uh, you know, at least have your, you know, open up your eyes to maybe chemo, maybe radiation, maybe surgery is in your best interest as well. But most people are on the other side of that coin where they don't do any alternative care. And they don't even think about it because, goodness, wouldn't their oncologist recommend that because he's only in it for my best? Well, I'm sure most oncologists only want the best for their patients. But the truth is they have three tools in their tool bank. Just because everybody else did it, grandma and your sister and your aunt did chemotherapy, does not mean it's right for you. So slow down a little bit back to rule one, and don't do something just because everyone else is doing it. Uh, don't need to follow another person's dogma. Slow down a little bit. Rule number three, you have to be your own doctor, especially in today's healthcare uh, conundrum that's out there. You have got to take control of your life and be your own doctor. You have to do your own research. Uh, do not just blindly surrender control to your surgeon, your oncologist, your chiropractor, your naturopath, whoever it is, 
you have to be your own doctor. You have to take charge of your body. And you want your doctor to be your coach, your doctor to be your leader, your doctor to be part of your team. You're going to have multiple doctors be part of your team. But you have to ultimately be the, maybe switch metaphors, the general contractor of your of your construction of your body here. So make sure you take charge and be your own doctor. Number four, <clears throat> there's a wisdom in a multitude of counselors. So you want to get second opinions. You want to get opinions from other people. Um, now be careful, there's a balance here. You don't want you know every person that is you know in your church coming up and telling you what to do. But there is a wisdom in a multitude of counselors, good, solid people that, that have um, interest in you. Um, and uh, everybody's going to have their bias. I have my bias towards well, more of an alternative approach. Take that into consideration. And then uh, um, surgeons can have a bias. What do surgeons do? They do surgery. Uh, chemotherapy doctors can have a bias towards chemotherapy. Well, take it all in balance and don't necessarily listen just to one person. That's what wisdom is. You gain knowledge from multiple sources and then you go to God for what is your answer in this situation. And have godly people help you walk through this. That's the key. Rule number five that's what what I mean, helping godly people walk through this, is you need to reason together. God said, come, let us reason together. He, he created your brain for a reason uh, to use it and to not just, again, surrender it like mush to somebody else because you're in an emotional disaster right now. Uh, well, slow down, get out of your emotional disaster, get, a, get some good biblical counsel, some good healthcare counsel, and let's talk about it with either myself or if that's what you, you're a patient of ours, that schedule a time to talk to me or Michelle or whoever you need to talk to or your pastor who, who could, could reason, could put this stuff together. You know, you, so many times you feel like you're drinking out of a fire hose when you go to the, the standard medical doctor or oncologist because they just hammer you with with a lot of pressure and fear um, that to do something and if you don't do it you're a bad person or a stupid person or everybody else is doing it um, that's not the reason to do anything you have to have peace about what you're doing and you have to know that God is leading you to do it um, and you're using wisdom and a sound mind in your decision-making process so uh, I'll help you reason together and we'll walk through it. I'm not against chemotherapy. I'm just against using it foolishly. I'm against using anything foolishly, even, you know, alternative care foolishly. You just have to walk through it. Sometimes it's the right thing to do, but is it the right thing to do out of fear? Probably almost never. Um, let's talk about it. You got time. Let's discuss this. Let's walk through it so you really feel peace about your decision and you know that God is leading you and then you can really have confidence that it's going to work for you. And if you do decide to do chemo, then let's be wise about it. This is just a, a picture, a clip from our blog post that I did on a protocol to support those doing chemo. So if you're going to do chemo, then you need to Again, schedule a time to talk to myself or Michelle or Anne or Ashley here to go through to get our protocol on chemotherapy and to formulate it, what's going to be perfect for you to help pull this out of your body after it does its work on the cancer and give it its best chance to work on the cancer, utilizing some dietary approaches and fasting and um, in the rice machine. And then when it's time to pull it out of the body after about 48 hours will help pull it out of the body and do less damage to your healthy cells because that's the whole idea if we're going to do chemo we want it to kill the cancer so um, we want it to give it the best advantage to kill the cancer and then secondly we want it to not kill your healthy cells so we want to detox that chemo and support those detox pathways so let us let's be wise about it and if we're going to do it let's do it wisely and get it out of your body and then lastly about this wisely thing all of our patients we're in this stage of reasoning together about what we're going to do with this um, 
one of the wise decisions we often make is we don't necessarily follow the schedule that they're laying out for you. If they're saying we need 10 rounds of chemo every two weeks, you know, does it mean you do? So how did they come up with that? Did they just throw a dart at the wall? Well, no, it's been through science and well, not really. If you really dig down, they didn't necessarily do a study whether people need uh, five rounds of chemo or 10 rounds of chemo. And it certainly, if they did any study like that, it wasn't based upon weight. It wasn't based upon body type. It wasn't based upon age. It wasn't based upon the specific cancer. It certainly wasn't based upon you. So what you need is not, <laughs> is not usually what the standard protocol is, what's written in their Merck manual, what, ph what ph some pharmaceutical company came up with um, uh, or a board from the pharmaceutical company came up with uh, what is the normal protocol for your type of cancer. So we've had many patients just do chemotherapy, maybe just one round to knock the tumor down, maybe do two rounds, maybe instead of every two weeks, they did it once a month. They chose the protocol for themselves. And yes, there, there's oncologists that will work with you just like that. So don't, um, don't think that if you're going to choose to do some uh, standard oncological approach, be it chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery, that you have to buy the whole package from them. So we can pick and choose what we want to do, what's going to be best here? for no, you. No. So, um, uh, and then lastly, we want to um, just make sure that we are being still and trusting God in all of this. So um, really, this is one of my life verses here because I'm not very good at this usually. Just being still and just trusting God uh, because I want to take charge and take the bulls by the horn and I want to figure this out and I want to solve the problem and that's, that's part of, uh, you know, um, a, uh, the benefit of my personality and the, and the struggle with my personality. So it's got a kind of double-edged sword. And it's hard for me just to stop, be quiet, and trust him and allow his circumstances to work out and his peace to come in my heart before I charge off and do something stupid. So you might be that same way. Um, make sure you just slow down and, uh, and let God tell you what to do and, and stay the status quo until he does tell you what to do. Okay, I'm going to unmute everybody and we'll open it up for questions. If you have questions at this point, chime in. Dr. Connor? Yes. I don't have a question. I just want to tell you thank you. Um, we made it home safely last night. And oh, fantastic. We both slept through the night. Oh, good. Um, woke up this morning with energy. Um, I don't think Randy's been in the house more than 10 minutes. Of course. Um, so anyway, I, I just thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And I do want to come visit your farm. So please, please do. Really do. Yep. So thank you for being here. You're always just a treasure, a, just a, a, a blessing to us, you know, as so many of our patients are. And it's just, um, it just I have the best job in the world just because I have I get to deal with people like you, so it's just a blessing. Well, God led us to you, so there's no doubt about it. So well, thank you. Thank you. It goes both ways. Okay. Any other questions? And just a reminder, if you guys do have questions, you can email them to info at Connors Clinic or Connors Clinic at Gmail. And uh, just please put in the subject line, Zoom question, so I can search for it, find it. Um, and uh, we'll get those questions answered on the next Zoom call. And continue to use Facebook. So ask those questions on Facebook too. All right, thank you guys. Have a good night.